You're listening to the Feel Good Astrology Podcast with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request your personal reading, go to feelgoodastrology.com. Hey there, welcome to Pluto Through the Houses. This is the 11th episode of Pluto Through the Houses where I'm looking at the um, the effects of having Pluto in your 11th house at birth and also what happens when Pluto goes through your 11th house um, and all the kind of mystery and mayhem that might occur from that. If you've listened to me before, thank you for rejoining me. Welcome back. If you're a new listener, I love that you found me um, and I hope you enjoy the Feel Good Astrology channel. Um, So this podcast is about me sharing thoughts about the unique strengths of your Pluto position and also to consider some of the challenges that come up in relation to Pluto in this position. You might find um, as I get towards the end, I'll be talking about whether your Pluto has really good connections to other planets in your chart, i.e. sextiles and trines. It definitely is expressed much more easily and gracefully um, if that's the case. You might be someone like me um, (laughs) who has a series of squares and oppositions to Pluto, um, in which case, you know, you you, you might find that the Pluto aspect in in your world is expressed with a little bit more um, trauma and resistance, but none of it is is um, necessarily um, unworkable. (laughs) So, uh, you know, if there's one thing that I can really give you from this episode is how to work with the Pluto energy, no matter how it reaches you. So before we look um, directly at the 11th house and Pluto's role within it, I just want to um, kind of recap what Pluto is all about. So it's the planet that transforms our experience you know, in mythology, it's the god of wealth and power and the underworld. And if you'd like to know more about Pluto from a mythological perspective, then please do have a listen to my Pluto and Aquarius podcast, because there's quite a lengthy piece in that. Um, Pluto shows us where we seek power, um, because it shows us where we feel weak and vulnerable. And it really shows us, it pinpoints exactly how we try to safety guard our life, safety proof it, so that we don't fall victim to what we fear is going to happen anyway. And Pluto really also shows us where we experience trauma, manipulation, an imbalance of energy in our life. Um, it can also show us where we might demonstrate our sexual prowess um, and also a little bit about enemies and resistances um, that, that show up against us or, or look like they are. From a spiritual point of view, I think Pluto is really here to teach us something really deep and painful. We've all got deep and painful things to learn in life. You know, it really helps us come face to face with our core beliefs. And they're often the ones that are no-go areas, you know, ones where we're absolutely petrified to look underneath the carpet. I also think Pluto shows us where we might be a bit arrogant Um, and have a false awareness of our own power and are are seeking to be great. Um, And so Pluto can often um, show resistance. Um, You know, it's it's kind of saying, hang on, you're not as great as you think you are. And and it takes a certain amount of humility to just say, okay, I'm not the best at that. And it's okay. Um, Forgiveness is something that comes up a lot, you know, as we get to the other side of a Pluto teaching. Um, No matter what darkness Pluto brings up for us, It always teaches us where we're truly free and how we can find freedom. So um, on that bombshell, let's have a look at the 11th house in particular um, and how the lessons of Pluto play out in the 11th house. Now, um, as I've gone through this series, I have looked at the evolution of Pluto, so to speak. So, you know, from the first to the second house, the second to the third, third to the fourth and so on and so forth. It is like there is an evolution journey taking place. And if we think about where Pluto has just come from, i.e. the 10th house, one of the things that we've been or one of the things Pluto will have been learning about um, himself is that with great power comes great responsibility. So, you know, the message of Pluto in the 10th is that we really can have our dreams come true. And we also have a choice as to whether we want to do that responsibly or not. You know, I mean, one of the things with Pluto is it seeks power and wealth at all costs. And that's why some of the people at the top do a lot of horrible things that many of us just wouldn't even consider 
um, doing, you know, so, you know, you want to think to yourself, okay, what will I do? And how much will I do of it? You know, do I have limits? You know, most of us have limits in place. A truly Plutonic person doesn't really set themselves limits. You know, they will, they will consider nothing is out of bounds or off, you know, um, is off the radar. <laughs> so that's another way of looking at it. So, you know, in the 10th, we've learned that there's great responsibility that is needed with the energy of Pluto. And that dovetails in really nicely to the 11th house because the 11th house, um, it's as, as far as I see, it is about the collective. It is about co-creation. It is about openness to friends, to networks. I really see it as the law of attraction house because, you know, if you're interested in the law of attraction, which is where you um, focus on what you want to create and then you tell the universe about it. You invite the universe to collaborate with you. I mean, that is, that is co-creation. Um, and the 11th house is, you know, taking your creativity. It is a place of creativity. It's, it's, you know, I always look at these houses and look at the, the polarity of the house I'm looking at. So, the fifth and the eleventh house have a shared polarity of creativity. You know, the fifth house is about what can I create, and the eleventh house is what are we creating? How can we co-create? So, it is a place of openness. It's also a place of networks where people are working together in in mutuality. It's also a place of the future. It's very future primed. You know, we're looking forwards. It can be associated with a little bit of scientific -y kind of um, information. Um, you know, it, it can be quite um, rational at times. And I, I put that down to the fact that, you know, in astrology, the 11th house also has a tie in with the sign of Aquarius, which is also ruled by Uranus. And, and so the sort of energy of Uranus and Aquarius brings in this idea of technology and sharing across databases or sharing almost like a, a flat line. It almost takes the corporatocracy represented by the 10th house and turns it into a socialist, more socialistic, more shared, more universal, more diverse kind of system. Um, now, the 11th house is also um, five steps on from the seventh house. So if you think in like, when you look at your ascendant, the first house that represents you, the fifth house represents your children. So if you think the seventh house represents your partner, the fifth house from the seventh house, which is the 11th house represents your partner's children. So you've also got this feeling that the in-laws and steps and stepchildren, stepchildren twice removed, any kind of extended family system seems to also show up in the 11th house. Um, and so I think Pluto in the 11th house can also have some quite um, interesting connotations for those people who are um, married to somebody or who start a family with somebody who's got um, previous families, you know, because steps and in-laws, etc., are really part of this. They're part of the collective picture. And again, if you think of the 11th house, where we're saying it is about openness to friends and bigger networks, that also is like, you know, we are open to extended families and extended families can happen in a multitude of ways. And if you think about the Aquarius Uranus thing as well, um, there is, um, a theme about being your unique self and being beautiful and being diverse and being yourself, being independent and being an independent thinker. And there's a bit of a paradox there because Aquarius um, is, is very much linked to um, Saturn and Uranus. It's not just ruled by uh, Uranus. So it's like, how can you be weird? That's Uranus within a system, Saturn. <laughs> and so, you know, with the Aquarian energy, the Uranus Saturn energy, which sometimes plays into the 11th house, you also have the energy of collaboration where weirdness and diversity and independence is also part of the system. You know, the system works for them. So yeah, Pluto in the 11th house. And it's funny that we're talking about Pluto in the 11th house right now, because Pluto has just recently gone into the sign of Aquarius. Um, and this month, um, I'm recording this in um, May, sorry, next month in June, 2023, Pluto is going to go retrograde back into um, the sign of Capricorn for, for another six months or so. So we are on the cusp of Pluto going into the Aquarian, which is really 
bringing up a lot of Pluto in the 11th kind of energy. Anyway, I digress. So um, Pluto in the 11th then, um, like where do you seek power? So you're seeking power amongst your friends. You're seeking control amongst your friends. You want to enjoy strong alliances and allegiances. You want to have long term friendships and loyal friendships. Most likely though, seeing as Pluto shows us where our initial trauma was, most likely um, we have had a power imbalance and a trauma associated with making friends, finding friends, having influence with friends. Um, You may well find that you are an outcast or cast yeah cast out of the social scene because you were different um which is again a very sort of 11th sort of feeling um you may have learned that your difference put you on the outside of things so for you to be yourself you weren't accepted within the collective and that is a really difficult trauma to understand you know it's the it's a trauma of scapegoating because usually that comes from inside your family first. So if you if you learn inside your family that you are somehow not right for the family, you're a bit different from the family, you're bringing something into the family that the family is unconscious about, it doesn't want you to do that, and, and you grow up feeling on the outside of your own family, it will um, more often than not play out in early school, in teen years, you know, because you'll be carrying that energy with you that you're the scapegoat. And then, you know, through no real fault of your own, just through being yourself, um, that seems to follow you around. So most likely the first real trauma is 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 um, not being liked or, or feeling that you're not being liked. Now, Pluto in the 11th also shows that you're quite an intense friend, you know, like the intensity of Pluto and the ability to see into the darkness and also find your way out, which Pluto represents, um, will come up as a theme for you. So you may be the sort of friend that people find too intense or too well-meaning or too um, insightful or too this, that and the other. Um, so you might be too much for um, relationships and, and friendships when you're really, really young, unless you can find a similarly um, a similarly passionate person that has got very similar goals. So yeah, there's a lot going on for you there. (laughs) What you fear is being rejected socially. Um, And you may also live on the outside like a bit of a pariah. Um, But you may also fear being in the inner circle, almost as if once you're in the inner circle, you lose that part of your identity that's important to you. So that part of you that allows you to have curiosity and to think outside the group. Like I said, the 11th house it's a collaboration, it's an openness to friends and networks. But, you know, the 11th house, if you think of the planets that traditionally rule Aquarius, you've got Uranus and Saturn, it's making rules to, like, it's making collective rules for people to follow. Um, And so whilst you yearn to be on in the middle of things, you may well find that you choose not to be part of these collective groups because it feels uncomfortable. It feels like you can't really be yourself if you want to change your mind. Are you going to lose your friends? Um, So that's kind of, that's kind of tough. Um, What you really need to learn is that tribes and cliques are forming all the time and that there are some tribes and cliques and groups that are for you. And there are some that are just not for you. And the strength of being on the outside or being a way shower or an outsider or someone who sees things a bit differently, um, it actually gives you a unique perspective. And <laughs> here's another thing that I was chatting with um, my husband um, about this morning is that when you're in a company of people that don't want to know something, if you've got an idea, if, if, your, if your mind, if your strength, if your instincts um, are coming up with new information and linking new things in, you won't be very welcome because in challenging the framework that everyone else has agreed to, almost like the membership rules, you will be breaking the rules and possibly bringing in a new feeling. And, and it goes against the establishment. It goes against the organization. Now, when you look at the 11th house as a place of collaboration and networks and things, it also um, shows mega organizations and where organizations work together. 
Um, and it can also show where organizations work to do something philanthropic. So a lot of, I think, um, charitable um, funds and businesses and associations often come off the back of these powerful organizations. They are um, it's almost like the 10th house, lots of 10th house people, lots of successful people come together with their successful businesses and they say, hey, let's do this together. Let's collaborate together and do this great big charitable thing. So you often find um, a lot of these um, NGOs and things like that um, and mutual alliances and building societies and, and things that work for the mutuality of people. Um, and also, um, campaigning things, you know, things that campaign where people all get together for a a, a good cause or, you know, they, they all get together to, because they believe in their good cause. Um, you get this kind of group mentality or a herd mentality, um, which can be put to good use and it can also be absolutely manipulated. So somebody with Pluto in the 11th that recognizes, um, well, fears being outside of the group but also fears being in the group because they realize that they can be manipulated with the um, herd is, is quite a threat. It's, it's quite difficult. I imagine at the start of, you know, I've, I've mentioned a few times in this whole series that there would be particular archetypes of Pluto that would have really struggled with what was going on at the start of the COVID phenomenon. So anyone that didn't believe Um, what we were told by um, the CDC, um, the FDA, (laughs) the NIH, the NHS, um, all of our different uh, medical establishments and our governments, anyone that didn't believe that um, would have really struggled. And that's a real sort of Pluto in 11th phenomenon, you know, like, um, I see the collective, I want to be part of the collective. And yet, there is something manipulating me within the collective that I'm not quite aware of, can't put my finger on, and I'm not going to do it. I'm going to be steadfast. So that's difficult. And then, you know, when things like masking mandates came out and um, guidance that everybody had to get um, a shot, um, that would have really been difficult for people with a strong Pluto in the 11th because they don't do things because they're told to do things. They do things because they're invited to and they think, yeah, that's great. I'm up for that or not. I suspect given that Pluto sees manipulation and Pluto can cause man- manipulation, I'm pretty sure that when a lot of these um, mandates and um, faux laws were put out or faux regulations were put out um, and there was guilt attached to them, you know, in the marketing, you know, like if you don't do this, you're going to be killing grandma and things like that, where there was emotive selling. Um, and also where people were given McDonald's vouchers and (laughs) and, um, free joints and things like that. If they did a particular action, um, I think that would have been identified by people with Pluto in in the 11th, they would have seen wow, there is a collective programming going on and I'm going to step outside of it. And it's hard because like I said, they want to be um, respected within the group. In fact, they want to save the group because, you know, Pluto in the 11th, the 11th house is all about saving and helping and collaborating, being open and, and creating a better collective. And so through them wanting to, um, um, identify if there are any um, manipulations going on, you know, in, in, in identifying that there's something not quite right and bringing it to the group and saying, hang on a second, you know, like whistleblowers really fit in this group because, you know, they are, I mean, y- you could be a whistleblower in your own sense, like you recognize something's not right and then you sit on it and you don't tell anyone. So could you imagine if you were, um, I don't know, in a group of lemmings and you can see all these lemmings are about to jump off a cliff and you're the one that can see there's a cliff, but you don't say anything. And so you just sit there and you watch everyone, um, you know, fall to all the lemmings fall to fall to their death. Now that the people with Pluto in the 11th will see some kind of group manipulation going on. Um, and because they're not service to self, because they're service to the collective, they will put their necks out and say, hang on a second, 
whoa, oh, slow down. You're about to jump off a cliff. Come back, come back, come back. So I do think for people born with Pluto in the 11th, what started out as maybe being scapegoated um, in childhood, because you see something, you want to bring it to the collective, you want to keep the collective safe. Um, and that is a control mechanism. You know, it's Pluto playing out. Um, you get your first trauma because, um, you know, what people with Pluto in the 11th is, are learning or one of the things they're learning is that um, the the group has its own rules outside of personal identity and, and it has its own way of thinking and it has its own way of protecting itself. Now, for those people with Pluto in 11th that have step children, um, ex-husbands and wives from previous relationships from your partners and this, that and the other, you'll probably find that Pluto also brings a certain amount of, um, let's say, confusion <laughs> into your world. Um, and it almost doesn't matter how much you try to do to help the overall good of everyone because um, it, it's almost like where you're trying to be nice or trying to be helpful or trying to um, be part of the collective, you'll always be on the outside. You'll never be part of the original crew. You'll never... Um, so again, it's another isolation. It's 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 being an outsider um, from another family. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, what do you really need to learn? Um, I think just to realise that this this is an age old problem. Um, groups are always forming and reforming, um, and you might just need to learn that actually the group way of thinking isn't really for you, um, and that you're an independent thinker. Um, and it might be painful and yet you need to still manage to find connection somehow. So you may well identify just with all living beings or you might just identify with being part of whatever goes on in this plane. Um, you may well identify just with all, all of humans, irrespective of whether they identify with you. Um, it's about globe like feeling more global <laughs> and I realize as I say global there's this warning trigger that goes off in my head because I hate that flipping word now because um, when I hear the word global all I think is mandates and structures and things being put in place that may or may not be um, for our best good <laughs> so um, yeah who's causing you pain Again, um, as with most of these things, it, it is you that is causing you the pain. Um, the nothing you do is good enough um, may appear to be true. Um, and yet you may well be, um, um, you, you may well be um, offering people more than they are willing to take, or you may be offering something that people have no interest in, you know, so yes, you may well feel rejected. Um, it, it's like you've got a tough crowd. Like if you're a comedian, you'd be a comedian at a place where people don't want humor f with your particular style. You know, there's nothing you can do if people have already come to the party and their minds are made up. It's not for you to persuade them. And it's almost like the more you persuade people, the more you're trying to have influence. Again, influence is a Pluto thing. The more you're trying to control the situation and have more influence, the more other people are feeling manipulated and they think, hang on, why is this person being nice? I need to be suspicious of them. So where they might have been indifferent at the start, they're now indifferent and suspicious. So yeah, I think Pluto in the 11th is, is you know, how you find your freedom is to realise that everyone is themselves. Everyone has their own way of doing things. Most people are part of a, collect, a collection and most people's mindsets and values and belief systems come from a collective programming. In fact, many of yours will too. Um, and yet it's okay to be independent. It's okay to be individual. Um, and it is okay to still care about the collective tribe. Um, I do think that people with trines and sex styles in this position could find themselves developing some really powerful allies and associations. They could do really well in um, businesses that collaborate with charitable things, you know, and work in, in between businesses. So if you've got some kind of service that links lots of different businesses together, you'll probably do really, really well. Um, you know, with trines and sextiles, you can probably create a much bigger dream with other people that you're 
um, creating with. You know, like I said, you know, this is about collaboration and co co creation. If you can make your um, Pluto energy work, i.e., not get hung up on the fact that you feel like an outsider or that it's not fair or you're being bullied or you're being scapegoated um, because you're not part of the clique. If you can just proudly just be yourself whilst not trying to change other people but just try and work with them at the level they're at you'll probably do really well you know you will be able to collaborate you will be able to use your strengths for a greater good and you'll probably actually have a greater level of influence because you're not trying to influence the group when you're working with them and just accept that everybody is doing their best that they can based on what they actually know, you'll probably do much better in life. Now, in terms of squares and oppositions, if your Pluto is in a ton of squares and oppositions, you may well just feel rejected and useless to the greater scheme of things. You might think, oh, crikey, I can't even sell myself. I can't even give my stuff away for free. You know, I can't even, nobody wants me. And you could really go down that path of feeling very disconnected from friends, disconnected from networks. But remember, you're not alone. There are lots and lots of people who sit on the outside of things. Um, I think the internet has been fantastic for, you probably find you're a bit more of a loner. Um, and so there are a lot of tools now that can help you come together. What I would absolutely um, recommend you don't do is is kind of form an alliance with other people who feel disempowered and disengaged because you may well end up unwittingly getting pulled into another um, an, another faction or another social network or another way of being that actually takes you off into a different kind of membership. I, I, I really... Um, I have to disagree with what, what Klaus Schwab says when he says, you know, you'll own nothing and you'll be happy. Um, I think when we're racing to our own demise by um, lowering our expectations and and being happy with everyone else with lowered expectations and kind of celebrating in how poor we are or how how um, uninfluential we are. You know, I don't I don't think networking with other people in a pity party kind of way is going to help you necessarily. So if you've got squares and oppositions, I would recommend that you, you know, you can be aware of it, you can make friends, but if you get pulled into that downward trajectory, I'd really urge you not to, because like I said, this is also the place of the law of attraction. This is where the universe is really listening to what you're saying about life. So... In terms of the squares and oppositions, I would absolutely recommend that you find out where you do belong, find out what you can connect with and just get connecting. Even if you have just have to start, a, 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 I love nature. Like I'm sat in my garden, well, my office is next to the garden. I'm looking out and I'm looking at the birds flying in and out. I'm looking at the plants in my garden and I'm feeling connected and that's what matters. Now, um, if you are... Um, if you have Pluto going through your 11th right now, now this could really, um, this could be very difficult because it will feel like a lot of people that you trusted um, in terms of friends and networks and maybe stepsisters, step kids, step families, um, maybe um, a cause of a bit of sorrow in your life. Um, it, it, you may feel just very disempowered, very cut off from your internal support system because, you know, we all need support at some level or it's nice to have support. I mean, we can actually survive without it. You know, as adults, we can do it, but um, it's much easier if we've got it. And there's, if Pluto is going to into the 11th house, you may well find that there's a bit of a disaster or a feeling of a crushing defeat in terms of who you can trust um, and and how you how you can um, re-establish that feeling. What you might um, choose to do is just come away from the group for a while. Um, like I mentioned in just a little bit before, you know, you may well find yourself in a bit of a loner situation where you're not really wanting to be around too many people at the minute, especially if in recent times, as I'm sure has happened to a lot of people with Pluto going through their 11th house in these um, post-COVID times, you may well have found that people that you thought were um, really good friends, good peers, good colleagues, good family members, you got good relationships with, you may have found that you have been feeling differently to the collective and that 
now you don't feel very aligned to them. So this is a bit of a wake up call. And if this is happening, it's happening for a reason. I think what is, is what's best. You know, if this is happening and you're having a bit of an awakening experience and you're awakening to a new kind of way of being, then you know, it, it, it's almost like it is time for you to be a bit of a way shower. It is time for you to be on the outside. And there is some beauty in the being in the outside, because when you're on the outside, you can see the patterns that are absolutely occurring. You may also find, believe it or not, if you've got Pluto in the 11th, which is a bit of an Aquarius theme, um, you may actually find you're coming into astrology. A lot of astrologers have an 11th house thing going on. They also have an Aquarian thing going on. So you may well find that being on the outside and, and observing humanity, observing the patterns is all you need to do right now. Um, and like I said, it is a law of attraction place. If you've got your um, attraction energy quite clear, if you're quite clear on your goals, you know how you want to bring peace and joy and love and connection into your life, then this is a time for you to probably go off on your own a little bit um, and to collaborate with the universe. That way you're not going to get any resistance because the universe will kind of work with you. It's when you're working with people who are uncooperative components in your life that things start to go awry. So keep your energy really high, keep it keep it high and away from people that are ready to um, throw you out and cast you to the wolves. Just keep keeping the right vibration, keeping the right vibrational frequency for you and you'll be fine. Um, last thing then, um, like you might ask, what is my big learning here? Oh, and that is such a good question. I think your big learning here is that Yes, like if we go through the whole wheel of the houses in terms of Pluto's journey and like in your lifetime, you won't go through the whole Pluto journey unless you live, you know, beyond 250. <laughs> I don't know anyone personally that's lived beyond 250 years of age. So it's not you're not going to go on the whole journey. But if if um, Pluto is going through your 11th house at the moment, what you're learning as part of the collective journey that we're all under um, and that is, you know, you can at some level you you've achieved some sovereignty and and you've achieved some level of success there's this feeling that you can ride high and and you can have power and that um with great power comes great responsibility and that's that's fantastic and so as pluto goes into the 11th your impetus is how can i use my power and my authority and my sovereignty to create more good how can i connect with other people that want to create more good and how can I do this this that and the other um and that's a beautiful thing to do but in actual fact when you're collaborating with other people you come up against their internal resistances you come up against their humanity you come up against all sorts of um all sorts of difficulties and so what I would say is in your desire to create more good in the world and to connect with more people and to have stronger friendships and this that and the other I would actually take this time to plan and bring in the law of attraction. So get co-creating, but co-create with your highest self, with your highest energy. So that's what you're learning really is that, in fact, you'll probably create stronger alliances with people if you do it outside of the physicality, you know. So I, I think what's really coming in is the start of an esoteric energy um, an energy outside of yourself. And it might be like a religion, it might be spirituality, whatever. But actually, I think you can co-create um, with the highest part of yourself and, and, and still feel connected, connecting with things that aren't going to resist you. Um, and in time, people of a similar vibrational frequency will, will join with you. Um, and that really brings us um, into the Pluto in the 12th, which will be coming up next. Um, where we go full on merge with infinite consciousness. <laughs> but of course, it's not going to be quite like that. But um, yeah, so I hope this little deep dive into Pluto in the 11th was useful to you. If you think it'd be useful to unpack some of these themes in a small online study group, then please do get in touch to arrange that. It's Louisa Tanner Munson at gmail.com. Um, you know, and if I can be of any help and you want to buy a consultation, then just go to feelgoodastrology.com. Anyway, thanks for listening. Thanks for joining me and maybe see you in another uh, podcast soon. Bye for now.
You've been listening to the Feel Good Astrology Podcast with Louisa Tanner Munson. To request your personal reading, go to feelgoodastrology.com.